So since we can multiply now, the last part of this section is going in reverse. If I have some polynomial or some expression and I want to take out things that are in common, what is that called? So factoring is the reverse of multiplying. So basically, we have two examples down here with uh, generic variables a, b, and c. So what happens? From the left to the right, I'm going from addition, that was our operation involved, into multiplication. And for the second one, we're going from subtraction into multiplication. So before, we would distribute that a in, get rid of the parentheses, and only deal with subtraction now. But now we're asking in reverse. So if I take my expression and I want to turn it into multiplication, how am I going to do that? So, to factor an expression is to find an equivalent expression, exactly the same, that is written as a product. When things are being multiplied, we have factored. So, the first thing we always want to do when we factor is see if there's anything in common that we can take out of everything to make nicer for ourselves. So, a few examples. In the first one, is there anything in common between these two that I can take out of both? A factor of 2. 2 is the greatest common factor that's shared between each of them. So, if I take a 2 out of 2x, what am I left with? x. And if I take a 2 out of 12, what am I left with? 6. So if you have to do that off in the margin, ask, okay, I'm taking 2x and I divided by 2. I took out a factor of 2. What am I left with? x. Okay, if I take 12 and I took out a factor of 2, what am I left with? 6. That's what we're really asking when we're figuring out what's left over. And we can always check and make sure that we have it correctly because I could distribute and I need to make sure that I get back to this original. So 2 into x will give me 2x. 2 times 6 will give me 12. So yes, we did factor that correctly. What about for part B? What do these two share in common that we can factor out of both? So a factor of 3, and what else could we do? They both share a negative. If I could make things positive and look nicer, I want to go ahead and do that. So let's take out a factor of negative 3. So again, if I take negative 3 out of negative 3x, what are we left with? x. And negative 3 out of negative 36 will be left with positive 12. And again, we can check if I distribute negative 3 back in, do I get to my original? Yeah, we do. All right, for c, now we're looking between three different terms and they're generic, they're arbitrary. We don't have specific values for a, x, y, or z. So again, we want to ask, is there anything in common that we can take out of all of them? Factor of a, and if we do that, what are we left with again? I have an x, and the y, and a z. And again, we could check, distribute it back in. Do I get back to my original expression that I started with? Yeah. Last, between these, is there anything in common between those four terms that I can take out of all of them? Factor of 4. If I take 4 out of 16, what am I left with? 4. 4 out of 12x, what are we left with? 3x. 4 out of 8y, what will be left with? 2y. And 4 out of 4, what are we left with there? Is it gone? We need that placeholder. 4 times 1 will give me 4. So again, we can always check. And the last thing we want to ask, can we simplify this at all? Can we make it look nicer? Is there anything that I can combine together? So on the inside, I have a constant 4 and a constant 1. We can write those together. Uh huh. So we'll have 5 all together. Plus 3x plus 2y. Duh. All right, so take those three. Factor out the greatest common factor. All right, so common between these two that you could take out of both was a factor of 7. 
And what are you left with on the inside? X plus 3. Common between these four that we could take out of all of them. They're all even, so a factor of 2. And we'll be left with z plus 7w plus 4y plus 10p. And again, we can always check, just distributing it back in, do I get to my original expression that I started with? And between these two, what should we take out of both of them? Factor of negative 2. If I take a negative out of a negative, it'll become positive. So 2 out of 4, I'm left with 2y. Negative 2 out of negative 2, I'll be left with a positive 1. And again, distribute if you're not convinced, so you can check. So as we start factoring and simplifying, we want to be able to combine like terms. I want to simplify and have it look nice at the end. So we first have to discuss what are like terms and then what are some non-examples so I know when I can't combine things. So the first example of like terms would be like negative 7 and 13, for example. Both of those are constants. They're of the same kind of number, so we could combine them together. Or anything that matches exactly variable-wise. So each of those are of the same kind of number, x squared on the back. So I have one factor of x squared and five factors of x squared. So we could combine those together. We could even have more than one variable involved, like 3yz and yz. I could combine those two because, again, they have to match exactly on their butts. They have to match exactly on the back ends. So what are some examples of not like terms? If I had 7x and 7y, I can't combine apples and oranges. They aren't alike. So we would have to keep those separate. Or if I was trying to combine like 7x and 2, constant and a variable factor, we can't combine those together. So hopefully you get the idea. We have to match exactly. We have to have the same variables or just be dealing with plain constants altogether. So there's a few different ways that we can work with collecting like terms. So looking at that first example, I have six factors of x and two factors of x. So altogether, naturally, how, how many are we going to have? Eight factors of them. But a way that we can kind of come upon that is by asking, what do these two share in common? that I can take out of both of them, that factor of x. So if I take x out of the first one, I have 6 over there, and 2 on the right, so all together I have 8 factors of x. So if it's helpful to look at it in this way as factoring, to combine those like terms, go that route. But if you're comfortable with the first, run with that. So when we're given an example like part b, I like to rewrite it and group together things that are alike. So my two y's I can combine together, and then my x's I can also combine together. Excuse me, my z's. So I'm going to group the y's and the z's together. So all together, how many factors of y am I left with? Four of them. And how many factors of z do I have? Four, five, six of them. And can I combine those two? Are they alike? No, they don't match exactly on the back end, so we can't. All right, last one all together. Fractions, scary things, but we can handle it. So, a couple different variables involved. I have some constants. I have a variable s and a variable t. So I'm going to go ahead and group the constants together. So two-fifths and one, those guys can be combined together. So I took care of him and him. I'm also going to put my t's together. I've got one and a minus five. And my s's, I'll group those together as well. So within those parentheses, we can combine, but not on the outside of the parentheses, because we have like terms on the inside, but none of them are all alike. So what are we left with here? We've got five-sevenths. From the constants, how many factors of t? A negative 4. How many factors of s altogether? Positive 4. All right. So take those last three tries. Collect the like terms. All right. So what came of the first? 
what is my constant on the front of x right here? It's an unspoken 1. So 1 minus a half, I'm going to have 0.5 of x left over, or you could have written it as 1 half x equivalent. For part b, what could we combine and what couldn't we combine? So again, my like terms I can group together. My constants will combine together. My y values will. And t doesn't have any friends. So what are we left with? Negative 8 plus 9y plus t. And again, we can't combine any farther because those aren't like terms. For part c, you had a lot of fractions to deal with. But again, similar story. We can only group together what we can combine. So 2 thirds t and 3 fourths t, they will be able to combine together. And z, negative 1 half z, we can combine those together. So in order to combine these fractions here, what do we have to have? What do we need down below? Common denominators. So the least common denominator between 3 and 4 is what? 12. So, what do I have to multiply 3 by to turn into 12? A factor of 4, so 4 over 4. 4 times 8, 4 times 2 will give us 8 up top. Those are equivalent. So, in equivalent form, 4 3 fourths with a new denominator of 12. What is that one going to look like? 9. And again, I have 1 minus a half, so hopefully we can figure out, hey, I'm going to have half left of z. So altogether, how many factors of t do we have? So 16, 17 over 12 t plus 1 half z. And again, not like terms, so we can't combine any farther. We've got to stop there.